Welcome back, Gadgeteers. Today we've got a topic we're going to discuss that could affect the users of macOS and iOS and probably already has, which is a little bit scary. Here's the thing. As most of you know, macOS and to some extent iOS are based on free BSD. Now, BSD, of course, is based on what originally was a Unix flavor called Berkeley Systems Distribution or BSD that was developed by Berkeley starting in the early 70s through about 1995. Now, much like the Linux open source initiative that came about years back from flavors of Unix that were proprietary and, of course, closed source code, the same thing happened with BSD. Eventually, BSD derivatives were created, and there are some such as OpenBSD, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and a couple others. One of the most popular ones is FreeBSD and much of the source code and the base operating system of macOS is based on FreeBSD and to some extent OpenBSD and NetBSD. Now, like we've talked about before, I typically do not use a Linux distribution that is derived from another distribution. So if you, for example, are using Linux Mint, Linux Mint is actually based on a distribution called Ubuntu Linux, which is based on a distribution called Debian Linux. So if, say, something were to happen to Debian Linux and development stopped, Ubuntu would no longer be able to continue. They would have to develop their own distribution from scratch or find another source distribution. The same thing would happen if, say, Ubuntu disappeared. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. Now, here's the problem with the BSDs, as they're called. OpenBSD, FreeBSD, NetBSD. These particular versions of BSD have a similar license to Linux in the sense that they're open source and anybody can use them. The problem is, it looks like the BSDs are beginning to die off. So there's fewer and fewer eyeballs looking at OpenBSD and FreeBSD, and when I say eyeballs, I mean programmers, developers, security experts that are in there working on the code, making changes, ensuring that whatever flavor of BSD, whether it's FreeBSD or OpenBSD, are receiving all of the updates. One person wrote an article just recently and his conclusions are very interesting and worth us taking a look at. So the article was called, Are the BSDs Dying? Some security researchers out there are thinking that yes, that is the case. This article was off of CSOonline.com. If you get a chance, check it out. It was written by J.M. Pora. This is a thought that I've had for a long time, and I've also read other articles about it, that the BSD systems just are not seeing the level of updates that Linux is. Now let's take a look at this and get in a little deeper. So the author decided to have a look at the kernel code specifically in the OpenBSDs. He said, struck by a small number of reported BSD kernel vulnerabilities compared to Linux, Van Sprundle sat down last summer and reviewed BSD source code in his spare time. How come there are only a handful of BSD security bugs advisories released every year, he wanted to know. Is it because the BSDs are so much more secure, or is it because nobody's looking? He continues by saying, by and large, most security flaws in the Linux kernel don't have a long lifetime. They get found pretty fast. On the BSD side, that isn't always true. I found a bunch of bugs that have been around a very long time. Many of them have been present in code for a decade or more. Now, looking at the different flavors of BSD, the author considered that OpenBSD was the clear winner for security and probably had the most developers and programmers looking at it and also had a much, much smaller code base, so it's easier to look at 
the code and determine if there's any bugs or issues. There's roughly 2.9 million lines of code in OpenBSD compared to 9 million lines of code for FreeBSD and 7.3 million lines of code with NetBSD. This definitely plays a part, Van Sprundle says. You can't have a bug in code you don't have. Next up is NetBSD, which is considered the clear loser in terms of code quality. The cool thing about NetBSD is that it does focus on supporting the widest range of hardware out there, but the downside of that is that there are more lines of code and therefore there's going to be a problem with security code quality. FreeBSD, which is what macOS is based on, is the most technically advanced of the BSDs. It's been considered pretty much one of the best. However, it does have problems with kernel bugs. Now, some of these bugs are serious security problems. FreeBSD was found to have 30 kernel bugs. To their credit, they did respond in about a week and even fixed a few in their source code repository. However, they did only release a handful of advisories and the status of the rest is unknown. Nobody really knows if they're being addressed or not. This next quote to me is very, very scary. Listen to what the developers of FreeBSD have to say. One of the issues we have is there's a large variety of issues that are being found out, but there are some issues that have no practical exploit. We've started treating some of these as just bugs and not security issues. So literally, one of the key developers of FreeBSD is saying that, quite frankly, because there's no attack vector that we know of at this time, we're not considering some of these security exploits as a security issue, but rather as just a bug. Even though FreeBSD is the most popular version of BSD, they simply don't have as many developers as Linux, and that basically means they're a bit behind in terms of security features. So the big question comes up, does FreeBSD kernel vulnerabilities affect OS X, aka Mac OS? When I submitted the bugs I had to the FreeBSD guys, they asked, do you mind if we send this to the guys at Apple? Van Sprundle says, so the security team at Apple has this list of bugs. I have no idea how much of it applies to them. There's probably a couple of bugs that do apply there. Apple didn't respond to the request for comments, and they declined to speculate, pointing out that only Apple would know the answer to that question. NetBSD's Maxwell is quick to point out that OS X includes code from not just FreeBSD, but also NetBSD and OpenBSD. One thing to consider is that the Darwin kernel has diverged sharply from the FreeBSD of 15 years ago, according to this article, and OS X has received a great deal more scrutiny from security researchers over the years. So are the BSDs dying? popularity affects security and as the article says more developers and more programmers looking at the code and working through it are more likely to find bugs. Linux is orders of magnitude greater as far as programmers out there having a look at the code. Van Sprundle says, based on my result code quality alone can account for the discrepancy between the bug numbers BSD versus Linux. Of all the BSDs according to the article, OpenBSD may be the most likely to survive, being far less popular than FreeBSD at the moment. Why would OpenBSD survive? Mainly because it's more of a niche development and has more of a focused use case and targets specific things. FreeBSD is a little bit more difficult for it to survive. And last, I love the BSD code base, and I would love to be able to tell you different things like how much more popular FreeBSD is and how easy it's going to be to survive against Linux. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. I think it boils down to a lack of developers. So if we're talking about the end 
of the BSD distributions. It's not something we're going to see take place immediately. It's going to be something that's going to be slow and over time. And there won't be any official, this is the end of free BSD or this is the end of open BSD. It's much like the Linux distributions out there. Interest begins to wane. Developers tend to leave and go over to a new development. There's a fork maybe in the code base and the developers move to something else newer and more exciting. So over time, we may see less and less interest in the BSDs as we have. And this does bode ill for Mac OS and iOS, which are built on the BSDs. Should we be concerned? Probably. Is the code base more vulnerable than, say, Windows? Probably not. Is it more vulnerable than Linux? I think so, yes. And that's a little bit scary. What could Apple as a company do? Well, they could do what other companies have done, such as Windows or Google, and that's invest in the distribution of their choice. So why not put aside some developers from Apple to work specifically on the FreeBSD code base to continue offering new development strategies, new code, new ways to enhance FreeBSD to make it more viable, at least in the marketplace over a longer term. It's very important for Apple to continue doing this. Now, to some extent, they do do that, and they do make their source code available according to the BSD licensing structure. So there have been changes that they've made. The difference is they're not directly working on the free BSD code tree. Instead, they're working on a derivative and a mix of their own code base, and they're offering the open source code, but they're not actually participating in FreeBSD directly. So unless they infuse some interest in FreeBSD, they may find that in the future, they're going to have to look for a newer code base. On the other hand, this could be good for Apple. If BSD becomes obscure and falls by the wayside, their implementation of FreeBSD and their OpenBSD derivative would almost become like proprietary code in the sense that nobody else would be running it. It's possible that in-house Apple is more than happy to work and develop their own specific flavor of BSD and they don't need free BSD anymore. It essentially will become their own operating system. Only time will tell, but what we do know right now is that FreeBSD does have many vulnerabilities in it, and many of these vulnerabilities are not really being looked at. So let's hope that Apple is working hard on their Darwin kernel and their version of FreeBSD, and they're protecting us when we use Apple products. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Give it a like, subscribe and share, and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Are you worried about the future of FreeBSD and how it might impact Mac OS and iOS? And are you a BSD user? And if so, what is your thoughts on the development situation with BSD for the future? See you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.